Alrighty. <laughs> What's up, people of the world? It's me again, Alex Winter. AKA P3 jumped in. Uh, if you hear any background noise, then I deeply apologize. Uh, uh, it's just it's miscellaneous random apartment noise. That's what living in an apartment is like. And yeah, today I'm reviewing the last episode of Jewish for Fears. I know I'm like a week late, so I'm sorry about that. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. What's up, people of the world? It's me again, Alex Swimmer, aka AP3 Jumped, and I am back once again for a new La House episode review. And uh, if you hear any uh, in random apartment noise, and I and I, I I apologize, there's nothing I can do about incidental apartment noises. But whatever. Uh, today I'm reviewing the latest episode, Cheers for Fears, and you know. I think the biggest fears anyone can have is the fear of the unknown. And and sometimes fear can come from something that just is, is completely unexpected. Like, I never would have thought a Loud House Halloween episode would wind up being mediocre. Like, I'm dead serious. Let me explain. I... This episode... I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. This episode completely disappointed me. Like... Where do I start? I, uh... guess I'll start with the good first. I mean, well... I, I actually, no. I'm gonna jump back and forth between what I liked about the episode and what I didn't like about the episode. It was... It disappointed me for a number of reasons. One, the, the I mean, the plot had interesting potential. It had good potential, but it was executed very poorly. It feels like the entire episode was half-assed. And I feel like this is the very first mediocre episode, not because of the fact that it is, a, not because of the fact that it's painful to watch, but because of the fact that the episode feels so half-assed, in my opinion, and it feels so, it feels like unfinished. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. Because, yeah, uh, I mean, the good thing is, like, I did like the visuals. The visuals were neat. The monsters looked great. The, the, the one guy in the zombie, the zombie costume, he was extremely well animated. Some of the smoothest animation I've seen out of anything in the show. And along with those little maggots and it, along with this, the, the plate of maggots from Health Kicked. <laughs> What a coincidence, I'm talking about maggots in the Halloween-themed episode reviews, but, yeah. Uh, and, um... Uh, uh, it's... This episode is just such a mixed bag for me. Like, I... I was super excited for this episode because it was a Halloween episode, and, you know, The Loud House has Halloween episodes every single year. 2016 had two, actually. Price of Admission and One Flew Over to Loud House. The latter being freaking uh, uh, freaking awesome. An awesome parody of zombie zombie media, and uh, last year is tricked, fucking phenomenal. The, like the best of one of the best episodes, and not the best episode in the series, in my opinion, just because of how well produced and well thought out it was, and how well the plot was executed, and uh, the pacing of that episode was good. And that's another thing about Jeers for Fears. This year's Halloween episode, the pacing was it was weird. It went by like way too damn quick, and as it. It was just, it, I, I was just left confused throughout most of the episode for, for a number of reasons. One, uh, Clyde, Lincoln and Clyde, uh, I was love seeing them together. Uh, 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 aside from that tangent, uh, they didn't really have any reason to be scared in this episode because they have gone through much worse situations. Like, they went into a real haunted house and argued for real. In the, in the, in the previous episode, Middleman, they were both willing to, uh, you know, Stand up for themselves, and so they won't be deemed as weaklings. Yet in this episode, they're scared constantly. The fact that they scream like literally twenty four times, like look at the wiki, it, they, they 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 scream twenty four freaking times. I didn't even realize how much they scream, and I didn't realize they even screamed that freaking much. The screaming itself did not bother me like like most people. It's it's. 
What bothers me is the fact that they had no reason to scream because of the fact that they had no real reason to be, you know, afraid. And it... That, that just felt kind of stupid. Like, they're sort of retconning, like, things that were established with these, char with these two characters, like, several months ago. Many, many episodes ago. Many, many moons ago, I should be saying. Um... And uh, I did like I did like seeing uh, what Lincoln's sisters were helping him and Clyde. Uh, that was that was that was sweet, and uh, I love their like mo their like ten headed beast costume. That w that was freaking awesome. Lily dressed up as a wolf was really freaking cute. Oh yeah, I love when she dr I love when she wears this random costume. She, so far, she's worn a, she's worn a uh, a squirrel suit, a um a kitty cat suit, and uh, now wolf. I can't wait to see what other costumes she'll wear. And Bobby, he, he was good in this episode, too. You know, he's really matured since the series began, especially in Season 3. And with this new mature Bobby, uh, this is this is how we're going to see him in Los Casas Grandes, I'm pretty darn sure. And, you know, I, I, like, I like this new Bobby now. I like this new Bobby who's, you know, sort of confident and sort of, you know, mature, like I said. And... And is willing to help people in need, you know, because he visit, he you know, he visits Lori and Ro Roy Woods every so often, not just because he wants to see her, but he's uh, he's grown accustomed to Lori's family so much that he wants to see not just Lori but the entire Lot family. So yeah, and that's that's nice. And another thing <laughs> that I've been holding off on talking about this baffled me more than anything. I think motherfucking Chandler. He made, he returned in this episode. He hasn't been in an episode since season one, um, the waiting game. He is my absolute least favorite character in the show. He um, uh, I don't want to drag this on too long, but him just randomly showing up like that was it just felt okay for him to make a comeback. That's fine. I mean, he's a He's an interesting antagonist, albeit he gets on my fucking nerves, but he's not hes not one of those antagonists that I enjoy seeing, he's one of those antagonists that I hate seeing. And, uh, at the end, he apparently just all of a sudden apologized to Lincoln and Clyde and decided he wanted to be friends with him. Like, just, just, just like that? Just random ass redemption for no reason? Like, I love when antagonists, I love when, like, you know, bad people and TV shows get, uh, you know, changed their ways. My Little Pony is a great example of this, where well, many villains have in the series have have become reformed in the sense of uh, stop stop using their powers for good, and they're no longer evil anymore, like Discord and Trixie and this a bunch of others. But the, in that show, I felt like the redemption. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the redeemed characters. Their redemption felt a bit more meaningful. Not every redemption in that show felt meaning, felt you know, justified or w wasn't developed enough. But the ones that were developed enough were were good. Um, with the, in case of Chandler's redemption, it was just random. Like it just it just fucking happened. Like there was, I, I felt like there was no reason for me to want to you know accept that redemption. If they would have developed that more, then I would have. I would have been fine with that, but in this instance, Chandler's redemption felt half-assed too. This whole episode just feels half-assed in a nutshell. Like, it has interesting concepts, but not a lot of them were developed. And that's really unfortunate. So, I am going now to end off this video by saying I give this episode like 6.5 out of 10. It's just... It's just a, like I said, it's a completely, it's a complete mixed bag for me. It's a lot of fun and interesting stuff mixed with a lot of just unsatisfying and confusing stuff. Just all thrown into this weird, just, just cauldron of just a weird episode like this. That's good and bad. That has good and bad aspects all at the same time. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, um, those are my thoughts. If you like this um, video, then don't forget to subscribe if you like. If you like the episode, and if you or if you didn't like the episode, let me know what you thought of that in the comment section below. And um, that's 
and that's it for me. Um, uh, stay tuned for the last episode of the month. I'm going to review that as being T Tell Heart. All right, I'm Alex Swimmer, aka AB3 John. Thank you so much for watching until the end. That's it for me, and I will see you soon. Goodbye. I hope you like this new like Halloween lighting. Uh, I kind of like it better than last year's, where I just had a lamp on in the corner and now all the lights off. Right here, I'm just filming right in front of my light outside my closet. So yeah, I did this in my my Halloween update, my October update for this year. All right, that's I'm I'm done. I'm going to stop because, yeah, I need to stop recording for so damn long before I don't know how to do outros anymore. Okay, bye.